Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Crypto Crypto Empire Morning Domination, episode number six. Hope everybody has has an amazing morning so far. My OBS was a little bit flustered. I'm not sure why it lags sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. But nonetheless, we are here live right now, ready to bring it to you. Welcome to everybody. We can see we have Guy Crip saying flame emoji and giving a little bit of a one of those things with the duck. What's up, Guy Crip? We got GHX7 saying morning. Let's get it. Trucker Steve in the building says, Trucker Steve says morning to all. Good morning, Trucker Steve. Hope you are well, doing good out there, driving around the roads. We got Dre in here. We got Ead, and we got Cryptoverse Explorer saying what's good, G. Have a good one out there. Thank you, Cryptoverse Explorer. You have a good one as well. We got the Silva Dollar in here. Everybody is here. Smash up that like button. Let's get right to business. We have a lot to talk about today. The market tanked. Bitcoin went as low as around $20,500. Is the bottom in or will there be more pain? Short answer is there probably will be more pain. I don't think that this is the bottom. I'll be giving you my reasoning in this live stream, so be sure to stick with me until the very end. But for now, we can expect a bounce. Let's get right into the crypto market update this morning and just kind of go over exactly where we're at. And then we'll get into the meat of the stream where we really discuss what's going to be happening next here in the crypto market. So taking a look at this market, we are now beneath $1 trillion total crypto market cap. And um, the world needs liquidity right now. And the first place or one of the first places they're going to take liquidity from is from crypto. All right. So I will say it right now, if you are buying, if you're putting money into the market right now, you need to make sure that you will not become a forced seller when most likely things do get worse three months down the line, six months down the line. Because I don't think that the bottom is in just yet. I know a lot of people are very giddy right now saying this is the bottom. That was it. That was the lowest we're going to go. All happy, cheering. Yeah, yeah, bull market now. No, that's not how it works, all right? We have not experienced max pain just yet. So I'll say it right now and I'll say it very clearly. If you're putting money into the market, do not put yourself in a position where you'll have to become a forced seller later on. Meaning you don't have any liquidity left, all right? So play your moves. Play the the moves on the chessboard correctly, know your situation, and don't put yourself in the situation where you're gonna to have to become a forced seller from your crypto. Let's see what else is happening in the live chat. We do have a lot of hype in here. We got David W saying, morning, what up, though? What's up, David W? We got Jazzy saying, let's dominate the crypto market. Let's get it. Yes, this is Crypto Empire, where we dominate the crypto market. Be sure to smash up that like button if you're just tuning into the stream right now. And if you're brand new to Crypto Empire, hit that subscribe button down below and turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Silva Dalla asking, when fire sales? I mean, this is a pretty good level to dollar cost average, but I think we go lower still. I'll be getting into that. Don't you worry about that. We got Reverend Flashback saying, hi, Connor. Thanks for your service. I'm happy to do it. Thank you for being here, supporting the channel, supporting the live stream. Of course, smash up that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps get my services out to more people on YouTube who are interested in cryptocurrency. Raphael saying, hello from France. What's up, Raphael? We got Labradoodle in here this morning. Crypto Empire legend right there saying morning empire. We got Arturo Torres saying he's here as well. Elvis here. Mr. Op Isin saying morning from Holland. All the way from Holland. This is a global audience here at Crypto Empire. No matter if it's morning, afternoon, or evening. Clear your distractions because it's time to get to business with this episode of Crypto Empire Morning Domination. Let's see. BTC heading to 17K. We'll talk about that. Connor, we need to talk about the debt market imploding. Yeah, there's a lot of things imploding right now, and the debt market is for sure one of them. And let's see what else. Bitcoin going down to 10K, and that's what I'm putting back in. Fresh money saying Bitcoin going down to 10K. It's a possibility. That is a level for sure. $9,000 to $12,000 is a very, very high interest area on the charts, right? The charts don't lie. When the charts are telling you that $9,000 to $12,000 is a level to look out for, you should be paying attention. Anyway, Bitcoin right now trading at $22,348. Ethereum trading for twelve or $1,220. So a bit of a bounce. It did go as low as about $1,080 last night. Bounced back up to $1,200. So a little bit of a, a scalp opportunity there, but it was like midnight over here in the East Coast. So I usually don't like to trade when it's that late at night. 
and everything is bouncing today. We are getting a much needed bounce in the market. Taking a look at the top gainers on the day, we got Helium up 24%, Bitcoin SV, which um, you know I'm not necessarily a fan of, but it's up 19%, Theta up 18%, Stepin up 17%. Phantom up 17%, Quant up 17%, Chainlink up 16%. A lot of double digit bounces this morning, all right? So short term bounce, we could start range bound for a little bit, we'll get into that. Taking a look at the losers, we got XCN down 38%, Monero down 8% on the day still. And other than that, not a lot of big losers. We do have Tron, there's a lot of talks about the USDD stablecoin losing its peg of course that is the new algorithmic stablecoin on the tron blockchain and tron down five percent right now speaking of stable coins let's go ahead and take a look at the stablecoin pegs right now because that is a valid concern in the market that these new algo stable coins are kind of losing their peg a bit so let's see we got usdd at 98 cents all right so it's down two percent however it's up. Let's take a look at this chart. So this, yeah, this is this is losing its one dollar peg as you can see over the past twenty four hours. So this is something to have a an eye on for, right? Because this doesn't have nearly as much liquidity or the amount of retail capital, the amount of overall investors in it as something like UST on Terra Luna did, but. It still has a market cap of $712 million, and it will have a bit of an effect on the market if it does actually totally lose its peg and death spiral to the ground like UST did on the Terra blockchain. All right, so a lot of stuff happening right now. Of course, Celsius uh, pretty much bankrupt, and apparently now we have other... Um, so here's a... A news release, Upbit Exchange warns of possible risk in waves in Tron due to the loss of peg by USD by stablecoins, USDN and USDD, all right? So we have to watch out for that, loss of pegs. And also, apparently, Three Hours Capital, which is another major crypto fund, is in trouble right now, all right? So people think Celsius is the biggest uh, staked lead to Ethereum dumper, but this Three Hours Capital, and it isn't relatively close. They are dumping on every account and seed round address that they have most looks like it's going to pay back debts and outstanding borrows that they have. So three hours capital also in a liquidity crunch, having to dump their staked Lido Ethereum onto the open market, which of course is causing the liquidity pool to dry up even further, further de-pegging as we can see the current peg is that for one regular Ethereum, you're getting 1.061 staked Lido Ether. So that is losing its peg. This is supposed to be one to one. As you can see, you do get 6.1% more Ethereum with the staked Lido Ether right now. So a lot of fiasco is happening in crypto, and it's really way too soon to say that the bottom is in yet. Not necessarily because all of these reasons that I'm mentioning right now. Really the main thing that is driving asset prices and the economy, the markets, is interest rates. Tomorrow, there's a huge announcement. Wednesday, June 15th at 2 p.m. and 2.30 p.m., we have the FOMC, what interest rates will be, okay? It's expected, it was expected to be 50 basis points with inflation being higher than expected. The Fed will most likely increase interest rates by 75 basis points. There's speculation that this was just priced in by the market with this huge crash that we just saw yesterday. If we go to the daily chart, as you can see, just a, an extreme red candle here of 18% in one day. So there's speculation that the market was pricing in a 75 basis point hike, but most likely there will be multiple 75 basis point hikes, which is why I'm saying I don't think that the bottom is in just yet. Crypto people, holders are rejoicing, you know, seeing this long wick down that hit 20K. And they are thinking that it's time to go in, that the, you know, we're, we're going to start resuming an uptrend. We're going to get a big bounce. Everybody's going to be able to make money. This was not Max Payne. There's too much comfort. There's too much optimism right now. 
diamond hands have not converted to paper hands. When the diamond hands actually do convert to the paper hands, that's when we know it's actually Max Payne. It's too nonchalant right now, all right? It's way too soon to say that we're done. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but here at Crypto Empire, it is indeed facts over feelings, and I will, I will only ever keep it real with you. I don't think we're, it's, it's done, all right? I think we are headed lower. So with that being said, let's hop into the charts and go over our Bitcoin technical analysis. So looking at the Bitcoin chart, you can see we went ahead and bottomed out in the short term at $20,787 down here, all right? And that is pretty much on par, or very close at least, to the 2017 crypto bull run market peak at around $19,900 or so. So, yeah, I mean, we are we have a nice bounce right now. I mean, this one candle from top to bottom is around 11%. So just a lot of volatility right now, for sure. Now, a lot of people are wondering, you know, if this isn't the bottom, then what's going to happen here? Right, because this is a major macro level. Is price not going to be able to hold this level, or are we going to get a big bounce here? So I'll make it very clear. I do expect a bounce. Right, you can see my lines on the chart, and um, you know I'm going to use these lines because they do represent key areas on the chart. We do have one at twenty-five thousand two hundred. All right, so if we do get a bounce, that is definitely an area of interest to look for shorts. But the main area of interest is going to come into play at this supply zone up here at twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. You can call it. All right, so if we go ahead and mark this out like so, this is most likely going to be the top area of any kind of bounce that we see here on Bitcoin. Most likely, we're not going to have a lot of volatility at all today because right now the market is waiting on this FOMC meeting tomorrow. This is a very big FOMC meeting. And if they do, in fact, increase interest rates by 75 basis points and the market didn't actually price that in yet, well, then we're going to have a very volatile day tomorrow. But I think today, most likely the markets will just kind of chill out and wait for the Fed announcement tomorrow. We got Sniff saying, let's all get wrecked. It's a group effort. Well, Sniff, no, I'm in this game to actually be profitable and not get wrecked. Of course, we do take some losses with the wins. But what I'm saying here, what I've been saying with the Crypto Empire Morning Domination live streams, I give you this information not for financial advice, but for educational purposes only so that you can make informed decisions on how to actually go about and play this market so that you don't get wrecked. And everybody who's been watching the stream the past week now has protected themselves from the Celsius collapse, has known that the market is going to crash lower. So we're actually avoiding getting wrecked now. All right. That is very, very important to note. So, I mean, you know, you can joke around and say, let's all get wrecked. But really, we're in this to, of course, make money and be profitable. And of course, that is the information that I provide so that you can make the most informed decisions possible to not get wrecked out there. All right. So. Definitely not doing this to uh, definitely not doing this to get wrecked at all. We're in this to make money and be profitable. And right now, smart money. What are they doing? I mean, really, they're kind of waiting because the Fed interest rates are literally everything. If we go back in time to November of 2021, the Fed literally announced that they will do anything to stop inflation. All the way up here, when Bitcoin was sixty-nine thousand dollars, the Fed announced that they would do anything to stop inflation. They said they were going to raise interest rates. All Congress members, right? We we all know that Nancy Pelosi loves to insider trade. What did she do up here? She sold her stocks. What did? I mean, all the big hedge funds—they all repositioned in November. Okay, all this smart money. Listen to what the Fed. Let's just listen to what they were going to say. Let's listen to what they said. The Fed has not done a very good job handling inflation, but they have been honest in the sense that when they said they were going to start hiking rates, they did just that. All right. And there was way too much optimism in the crypto market at this time to really understand that, you know, the Fed hiking rates was really going to cause this catastrophic effect on the market. But, you know, the people that really understood. Congress, hedge funds, big VCs, etc. They all reposition their portfolios up here at the top and they are still waiting, okay? Because when the Fed actually turns dovish again, when they say they're going to stop increasing rates, 
that is when it's really time to get bullish. And right now, inflation is still a huge, huge global problem, especially in the U.S. as well. So the Federal Reserve's main issue right now is to handle inflation. Nothing is going to change until that happens. So what should you do? You should be patient and you should learn new skills. You should learn how to short-term day trade or swing trade because that's how you're only going to be making money in this market. It is not a buy and hold market and expect things to pump 10x anymore. Easy mode is well over. You need to have actual skills of reading price action and knowing how to trade if you want to make any money in this market. Which is why, of course, I put together my course, the, tra the Premium Elite Trading Course, available on my website. Hit the link in the description below to find out more about this course so that you can actually learn how to trade this market and make money from it, manage your risk properly, understand the, the emotions and the psychology behind it all. Because if you don't have these fundamentals in place, you're going to give in to your urges for dopamine and you know your urges to gamble and speculate, and you're gonna end up going in too soon or making rash decisions and getting wrecked. And we don't want that to happen. So it's very important to play your cards right right now. And the Fed is literally telling all. Okay, we can say all we want, all the bullish catalysts we want, but simply put, I don't think that this is over just yet, all right? When the Fed wants to start uh, stopping their interest rate hikes, then okay, we can start talking about kind of a bull market, but we don't know if that's going to be in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 15 months. We don't know when that's going to be. So for now, we do expect more downside and we are only short-term trading. With that being said, if I drop this down to a lower time frame, before we do that, we can go ahead and pull this fractal, this range bound fractal, and we can see that price does have some levels. We have the negative one here at 17,912, and if we pull up the negative 1.618, that is coming into play at 13. Okay, so we're not getting the FIB levels that I'm looking for, but realistically speaking, most likely your next target is going to be, I would say, around $16,000. reason I say that, we can go ahead and take a look at a longer term chart with the data that we need. We can go ahead and take a look at this chart. And we can see that this nice long wick down from this demand zone over here on the chart takes us in that range from about 19,200 down to about 16K. And this nice long wick on this three day chart at 16K is definitely an area of interest to have on your radar, okay? You know, lower than our current previous all time high over here. As you can see, this 20K all time high from 2017 hasn't even actually been tested yet. But, you know, uh, a demand zone did form in 2020 when price was actually going and breaching that previous resistance level. And the low of the demand zone is around $16,200. Okay, so this is your next level on the chart lower than current price that we are waiting to get hit. There are no givens that it will get hit sometime soon. We could go range bound for one week, two weeks four weeks, eight weeks right now, right? We just had a huge, huge major collapse, major crash. Price dropped in the past week, around 34%. So it's definitely possible we go range bound right now, but for the most part, this is what I am expecting next for Bitcoin, down here around 16 to $17,000. And I honestly don't think that will be the bottom either, right? I think we can definitely go as low as 12 to 9k like I said all right so there's no reason to get giddy right now and start throwing money it is an amazing price to dollar cost average for the long term right if you can wait two three four years most likely just two years until the next halving in 2024 but if you're thinking short term if you're thinking if you buy now and in a few months it's going to you know pump and you're gonna make money from it I think you were sadly, sadly mistaken. All right, understand the global macro environment that we are in right now is extremely bearish. It is not good. And everyone around the world is crunched for liquidity for the most part. So cash is actually king right now in this high inflation environment. You need cash, you need liquidity. So if you don't have a lot of capital, not financial advice, I would say, but it's most likely a better idea to wait for lower, all right? 
if you have cash flow, which you should, then definitely you know you can dollar cost average over time and play it that way. But most likely we are headed lower. Next level is going to be down here at around sixteen thousand dollars. All right, definitely important to look for. Now, if we take a look at Ethereum, Ethereum, as you can see, went ahead and had some bullish divergence yesterday and had a nice like ten percent pump from this bottom. Yeah, nice sixteen percent move there on ETH. All right, so this. Um, this was a nice bounce here, okay? Right back to our support level at around $1,200. Now, as you can see, we are going range bound sideways on Ethereum, right? We do expect this to continue most likely, like I said, until the Fed announces the rates tomorrow. I'm not expecting a lot of volatility at all today in the market. I think we will stay in this tight range, most likely between you know $1,150 to as high as around $1,300 taking place up here on ETH. But we did have a nice bounce yesterday, some nice bullish divergence. If you pull up the RSI, you can see how the price, how the RSI was going ahead and it was making higher lows here, right? So you look for the lower lows and the higher lows at the RSI, and that is your bullish divergence. And this one did play out nicely for a little short-term trading opportunity. Uh, but of course, we're looking at it hindsight 2020 right now. And... Um, that is our market this morning. So very bleak, but uh, you know, I'm just being honest with you. We're headed lower, so you know, don't get excited just yet. Yeah, you know, we went ahead and we hit the 200-week moving average. We actually breached the 200-week moving average. We went as low as twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, twenty thousand eight hundred. And uh, for now, we have to be patient and wait for this big FOMC interest rate announcement tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Let's see what everybody is saying in the live chat right now. We got MMC John saying LFG exclamation point. What's up, MMC John? Let's see. How is it going in the U.S.? I hear gas prices are disgusting. People selling their car. Also in the U.K., Germany has also a problem. Yes, gas prices are quite high right now, over $5 a gallon. And um, we'll see if that slows down. Most likely not. Okay, it's a very high inflation environment right now all around the world. And yes, um, people are choosing not to drive um, you know, fossil fuel cars because of gas prices, which to me is kind of a problem with their mindset, right? Um, but yeah, it is what it is. People will be people, right? It is what it is. We got Raphael saying, should I get USDT or USDC? I would say that USDC is your safer stable coin to be holding all right usdc over usdt but for active trading i do use usdt okay is it wise to dollar cost average into ethereum right now i mean i think so right this thing was almost five thousand dollars just a few months ago now it's at twelve hundred dollars all right so it's down major Right, ETH from its all-time high is down 75%. So it will go back up to this all-time high at $4,900, but you don't know when it's going to happen. Okay, so yes, it is a good time to dollar cost average, but understand there's a very, very high probability that prices do actually go ahead and they drop lower from here. So don't just kind of um, blow all your chips at once. Three hours capital also blew up. Looks like they're in the process of blowing up. We will be covering this, keeping a close lot, uh, close eye on this. But yes, all the big kind of institutions are crunched for liquidity, having to go ahead and liquidate assets for capital, and it is a mess all around right now, especially for the big money who were you know taking out loans, etc. Now they are having to repay or get liquidated, and uh, we're seeing a lot of dumping on the market because of that. Emlyn's saying maybe he'll wait for Bitcoin to reach 20K than dollar cost average. You could do that. You could do that for sure, but I think we'll go lower than 20K. Let's see. Sniff saying ADA held it together more so than any other in the top 10. Interesting. We'll take a look at Cardano. We got Dalton Moore with us this morning saying, morning fam, let's get it. What's up, Dalton? How are you? We got Guy Crip saying, remember someone on Twitter saying about releasing Telegram logs? Any word of that? 
it was supposed to be on the 15th of June, which is tomorrow, all right? Those those leaks, somebody saying he had, um, you know, telegram messages from everybody in crypto, from the biggest influencers, etc., all the shady stuff going on. It was supposed to be tomorrow, June 15th. I haven't heard any updates about that. I'm not sure if it's actually verified or legit. I hope it is because I want to see the truth come above water and I want to see, you know, what these people were actually saying behind closed doors in their little private telegram group messages. Because we know is very, very shady. Um, so I hope those messages do get released and the snakes get exposed, but I'm not sure if that was verifiable information or not. So we're going to see tomorrow when the supposed announcement date was. But going to be very interesting. We got Dartinian saying, Connor with the hands up. What's up? How are you? Smash up that like button. And we also got Fresh Money saying, is there any other coins out there to make money in the meantime? If you want to make money in the meantime, you need to trade, right? In terms of buying a coin and expecting it to go up, it's not the market for that, right? It's not the market for investments. It's an active trader's market making money from the volatility, that's all. Uh, but as far as a coin in the short term to make money, no, this is not This is not it. That's the very simple, safe answer if anybody's thinking about buying something, expecting it. We could bounce, you know, 40 50%. That's a good trade right there, spot. But uh, there's no guarantees with that. And we've already bounced around 15 to 20% on most coins from the bottom right now. So no rush, really. Now let's go ahead and let's move on with the stream. Let's take a look at Alameda Research. So Alameda Research is one of the biggest VCs in crypto. And of course, Sam Bankman Fried, the owner of FTX, and of course, behind Solana as well. Uh, that is his firm, Alameda Research. They are notorious because they are ruthless, right? Apparently, they are the ones that attacked the UST, the Terra UST stablecoin. They made Terra collapse. Apparently, they want to see Celsius get liquidated. And, um, you know, they all the Solana ecosystem coins like Radium, Serum, etc., they pumped all those up and they sold it all at the top. Um, they totally used retail as exit liquidity. So Alameda Research are the sharks of the market. And here, according to Masari, we can see their holdings. Okay? And here in their holdings, we can see you know, everything that they're holding in terms of the order as well of how much they are actually holding in their portfolio. So taking a look at their portfolio, we can see that they're holding Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana, and then Leo then FTX, okay, so they're holding Leo over FTX, and then a bunch of other coins, but these are their top five holdings right now, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Solana, and Leo, so this is definitely something to take a, keep a close eye on, you can see Leo is a centralized exchange token, it's ranked number 15 in market cap right here, okay, and if we take a look at this, it's very interesting if we do a little bit of research and just look at this, Looking in terms of Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's up 5% in Bitcoin in the past 24 hours, meaning that somebody's using Bitcoin to buy this right now. And if we look at this chart, if we look at this data, the all-time high was made in February at $8.14, and it's only down 34% from its all-time high, when literally everything else in the market is down like 70 to 90% plus from its all-time high right now. So this definitely needs to be taken an eye on and also taking a look at its values in terms of Bitcoin and Ethereum, you can see its values in terms of Bitcoin and Ethereum as of late have been skyrocketing. Okay, people are using Bitcoin and Ethereum to buy Leo. Now what is Leo? Leo is the exchange token for Bitfinex. Bitfinex is one of the original cryptocurrency exchanges. They're notorious for one of their hacks many, many years ago, but they've been around from 2013. Okay, so this is like one of the most reputable, reputable, trusted crypto exchanges, and their token is Leo. So this is something to keep an eye on. Alameda is using Bitcoin and Ethereum to actually go ahead and buy this. And there's also something very interesting because from that Bitfinex hack, there are like hundreds of millions of dollars that are going to go back to Bitfinex. And Bitfinex actually announced that they're going to use that money to market by Leo and then burn it. All right, burn all of those tokens. So we can see all of the tokens are already in circulating supply from the total supply. So you don't have to worry about it getting dumped on by early investors, right? Everything is already in circulation. 
now apparently Bitfinex will be getting their funds back from their hack many years ago and they're going to use the hundreds of millions of dollars to market by this Leo and then burn it all. Okay. So I would recommend to put Leo on everybody's watch list. I recommend you keep a close eye on it and it could be a worthwhile investment over this bear market. Of course, this is not financial advice. All we're doing right now is simply following what smart money is doing, right? Clearly there's something going on with this Leo token. Keep an eye on it is all I am saying. Of course, I am here to give you the most up-to-date and relevant news and I will continue doing that. But this is breaking right here and this is very, very relevant. Keep an eye on Leo, all right? Let's see what's going on in the live chat. Localhost, is USDT safe? So, I mean, it's it's not totally 100% safe, but it's kind of safe. If you have a ton of stable coins and only holding USDT, I would recommend to put some in USDC. BUSD is your safest one, but USDC is your most trusted. I only have USDT in terms of active trading in my trading account, okay? I'm sitting on a lot of cash, and then I have a trading account, multiple trading accounts on different exchanges with USDT, okay? But in terms of my actual holdings, like put away, USDC over USDT. Let's see, Reverend Flashback saying, Brother Leo is in their fifth largest holding. The list is just showing the coins in order of their market cap. They can hold a tiny amount as well. Um, I'm not sure about that, my friend. I am not 100% sure of that. Either way, even if it is in their fifth largest holding, something's going on there because it's only down 34% from its high. And if you look at it in terms of Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin and Ethereum is getting thrown at this, okay? So clearly, somebody's buying this. Look at it in terms of ETH. This is the red line here. It's going parabolic straight up. So even if it isn't their fifth largest holding, my mistake, I could be wrong about that. Um, either way, somebody's market buying it in droves, okay? So something going on there is all I'm trying to say right now. Could be wrong about it being their fifth largest holding, but... Keep an eye on it is all I'm trying to say. They can hold a tiny amount as well. Yeah, but it's Alameda. I mean, I doubt they would be holding a few hundred dollars or something of that. Or even a few million, right? They play big. Any news on Polkadot? Um, I mean, Polkadot going back down to 4 to $5 most likely if we take a look at the price chart. As you can see, our lowest wick brought us to $6.36. And we need to go all the way back to 2020 to see the price action down at these levels. In terms of news, like the ecosystem, the strong projects are going to continue to build throughout this bear market. But in terms of the price going up, it is subject to everything else going on. And the main thing, like I discussed, is the Federal Reserve and interest rates right now. So looking at Polkadot, you can see my outline level down here from $5.46 down to $4.50. This is where DOT is most likely going to head. So if you're thinking about buying DOT right now, it probably will be going lower again. So there's really no rush to be throwing capital into the market. But DOT, great coin, as you can see, nice clean breakdown from the symmetrical triangle. Now finding some relief right here at six dollars and 38 cents using that as a local bottom and we're probably going to go ahead and chop around might pump back up retest resistance before making our way back down to these lower price levels in the market 18k cme gap needs to be filled yep and like i talked about at the beginning of the stream tony i think that we are going to most likely around 16k next uh, why did alts outperform BTC? They are supposed to move same direction even harder. Well, there was a ton of liquidations of Bitcoin yesterday. Um, so if we take a look at dominance. Dominance still headed down on the daily now. We've had this is our third red day in a row of dominance heading down. But why did alts outperform Bitcoin? Most likely from the ton of forced liquidations from big big institutions like Celsius and now apparently Three Hours Capital. Um, you know, having to liquidate Bitcoin, just market selling it, uh, which is causing, of course, 
this dominance to drop. But the real big reason that dominance is dropping so much is because people are even selling their Bitcoin into what? Stable coins. All right. So dominance, definitely important to keep an eye on. We can come back down here to the 45%, 45.35% level. Maybe use this, maybe use this little demand pocket here as support. But ultimately, I don't think that this bear market ends until all the garbage, scam, um, pump and dump, altcoin gets flushed out of the market completely. And that won't happen until Bitcoin dominance is over 50%. All right, so I still think Bitcoin dominance will be heading over 50% here. But for now, it is pulling back. But like I said, Bitcoin is even being sold for stable coins. Right here, we, we're looking at the stable coin dominance of USDT and USDC. This is on a tear straight up. This is a daily chart, right? We, we can go to a weekly chart and we can go ahead and see that since November, let's see if we can find November of 2020, right? November of 2020, we bottomed out over here. This is the stablecoin dominance. And since we had that bottom in November 2020, we have been going straight up pretty much vertical, okay? There's money being converted into stables. So Bitcoin as well being converted to stable coins, which is why another big reason of why we're seeing Bitcoin dominance drop and Bitcoin performing um, you know, much worse than a lot of altcoins out there as well. And of course the US dollar breaking the multi-year resistance level, making new highs. This is our weekly chart. As you can see on the weekly, we have officially went ahead and cleared. Perfect back test. This was outlined, right? This, this long-term channel here on the US dollar. This is a weekly chart. We went ahead, we tested the multi-year resistance top, pulled back right to the channel for support. Now we've already went ahead and made higher highs here. So most likely we're heading to 108 for the US dollar currency index. Of course, the dollar rises, crypto falls, stocks fall. So yes, this is what is happening right now. Higher interest rates means a stronger US dollar. A stronger US dollar means a weaker economy as well as lower asset prices because there is less disposable income, spare capital, spare liquidity going around for people to go ahead and invest their cash in. Raging, soaring inflation as well, cost of living going up. All these factors contributing to what we are seeing in the markets right now. And until the Fed switches their stance, this simply is not going to end. We have never seen a global macro environment like this before in cryptocurrencies inception, since 2009, of course. This, these current factors at play have never been present before in the market. So these are definitely unprecedented times and you need to adapt your thinking and adapt your data because of these, these times are so unprecedented and we've never seen this before. But the main issue for sure is inflation. Until that gets handled, we're not going to see crypt, another crypto bull run, all right? So this could take place in over another six to 12 months, who knows? But yes, the US dollar going up higher as well. Stablecoin dominance increasing. Cash is definitely king at the moment. Keep that in mind at all moments of time. Let's see what's going on. Raphael saying, thanks for everything you do. No problem, Raphael. Definitely smash up that like button, everybody watching right now. I can see we have 67 viewers and only around 40 likes. Smash up the like button if you're enjoying the stream thus far. We got Luthi Rachel saying, what's your suggestion on SIA, SCC? Um, not a fan of it. I think there's a lot of better picks out there. So if you're talking about SC, then I still wouldn't touch it. But SCC, I don't even know what SCC is. Let's see. Sue saying, altcoins outperform Bitcoin due to Bitcoin dominance, which dropped as Bitcoin dropped and liquidations as well, 100%. Sniff saying, Tether's market cap is always equivalent to its 24-hour volume. No other stable coin does this. Interesting. MMC John saying, Alameda doesn't care. Do you think they did this to Luna? Now they're looking to blow everything up. They're, they're in it to make money, right? They're, they're literally like, they're, they're the sharks in it to make money by any means possible. So I don't think they're doing it to necessarily just blow it up, but they're doing it to make money. And if they can make money by liquidating big entities like Celsius, they're gonna go ahead and do it, right? They don't care, exactly. 
We got CG with us this morning. What's happening, CG? Saying, yo, buddy, just jumped on, but we'll watch again later. Definitely go ahead and watch the replay so far, CG. We've been going for 40 minutes already, and I covered a lot of very, very important information about basically the current state of the market and where I think we're headed next, and most importantly, why I think we're headed lower next, right? The reasons why are very, very important, and a lot of crypto investors just get all giddy and happy thinking that the bottom is in, but they don't understand that all the factors at play here, and of course, mainly... I'll repeat it again, it's the Fed and interest rates. Until those stop getting hiked, we're not going to have any kind of bull market. We got Sniff saying my two low cap gems are Terinium and CPRX. Awesome. I've actually never even heard of either of those coins. Um, now let's talk about basically what we're looking for here in the short term on Bitcoin. All right, so here in the short term, I did actually end up placing some trades yesterday as you can see. I went ahead and took a, it was a very clean setup actually, at around 24,500, which was, if we can find that on the chart, it's around over here. But basically, it was just not the time to go ahead and trade, and I did get stopped out. And I'm perfectly fine with that, right? Because if anybody recalls, we did actually short chain link from the top pretty much and we wrote it all the way down and that trade in and of itself could literally cover like 20 losses 20 stop outs okay and even like you can see in this trade here I went ahead and said this is due for a bounce but keep in mind we could see a crazy move again in the market as these are not safe trading conditions which make this a riskier trade than usual so keep that in mind with your position sizing all right so i didn't go totally heavy on the short-term scalp trade but the reason we look for these small short scalping opportunities is because we know we can afford to be wrong right that big win on chain link i can literally be wrong 15 to 20 times in a row on trades and still be profitable that is the key to successfully trading by eliminating the large loss keeping those big winners and just making sure you consistently place your stops hit the doubles and singles along the way and take the small losses too but if you just follow that strategy it is impossible to really lose now right now if we go ahead and head back to bitcoin really nothing clean we are chopping around the trade would have been last night this divergence right as you can see we can also look at the rsi this is a good lesson for everybody right now who's newer to trading and doesn't understand what bullish divergence is all you're doing is looking for higher lows on the rsi and lower lows on the chart to go ahead and find that and when this actually was not clean at all on bitcoin it was clean on eth but not bitcoin but regardless right now we are waiting for the Fed announcement tomorrow. So not a not a very exciting market besides the fact that we are just cascading downwards in a very, very, very big downtrend, all right? So you have to make the most of it. I mean, I actually did buy some Bitcoin spot yesterday at 22K for my very, very long-term bag. And I did buy one other coin spot also for my very, very, very long-term bag. And if you're wondering what the other coin was, I will go ahead and show you what it is. It was Monero, all right? The privacy narrative will be very big. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Monero chart because I do think it will head lower and when it gets to my outline levels, I am going to be buying a ton of this. Right, I bought some here, but I still think we are headed lower on XMR. Now if we're looking at Monero here, we are at the bottom of our demand zone at $120. As you can see, this is where we wicked to back in May on the May crash. Now we went ahead and we're here today as well. All right, so this is a key level and, you know, we expect some kind of a bounce. We expect this to hold for a little bit, but I don't think that this is the bottom just yet on Monero. We can go ahead, let's go to a weekly price chart. Now on the weekly, you can see I do have a big level over here at $80 and then this previous resistance at 70 Let's definitely go ahead and mark this resistance level right here at 70 on Monero. Most likely, this is going to be our generational buy opportunity down here on Monero. Around $80 to $70, I would say. Possibly could go low as $60 on a wick. But we can't necessarily guarantee that or be sure of it. But my like 
my bear market lows are 80 to 70 dollars on monero this is where i'm going to be buying a ton of this for the long term all right so i recommend that everybody go ahead and mark this on your own charts and be patient and wait for price to break $100 on Monero if you are thinking about also going ahead and creating a position with this very, very good coin, right? This is one of the best fundamentally sound coins in all of cryptocurrency, even better fundamentals actually than Bitcoin, okay? Because of its privacy aspects, of course. But yes, Monero had a very strong move up to 300 and from that high, it's been on a very steep descent downward. You can see even with this trend line, the steepness of the trend line. And the rule for trend lines is the steeper it is, the more likely it is to actually break. But, you know, this has been down only down 55% from this high up around $300 on Monero. And if it does reach our lower outline level, that is going to be taking place 71% down from that high and from current price we're talking another 36% lower. All right, so if we can be patient and hold out for these levels, we're gonna be able to stack a lot more XMR. And this is easily a four figure coin, next bull market most likely, especially when the privacy narrative starts to kick off. I think Monero can easily be trading above $1,000, possibly even up to 10K as well per coin. And I'm talking about buying it at around 70 to $80 right now. All right, and this is not a drill either. I'm being 100% serious. This is definitely one coin that I will continue to keep a very, very close watch on and continue to accumulate. Of course, in small increments right now, because like I've talked about, I don't think that max pain has come for us just yet. People are too optimistic right now in crypto. And even still, this does not feel like, I remember the March 2020 bottom we go back in time and look at that on the chart the march 2020 bottom was like one of those days that you, you just won't forget right it felt like the bottom everybody was freaking out it's not the same right now all right it is not max capitulation max pain right now it is not the same as this i mean no market crash will be the same no two will be alike but the feeling the emotions will be similar the sentiment will be similar and we just don't have the same kind of sentiment that we experienced back here in March of 2020. So it will come. It will be a very, 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 you know, painful day for the holders or the people that went ahead and bought the dip too early and put all their capital into the market. Because let's say worst case scenario, we go down to 12 to 9K on Bitcoin. We're talking another 44 to 53% lower here. And it is very possible that it does happen. So just keep that in mind. Not the time to turn bullish when the Federal Reserve goes ahead and starts expanding the economy again and turns dovish. That would be the optimal time to actually turn bullish. But inflation is the biggest problem right now in terms of all financial markets. Let's see what else is going on in the live chat right now. Will they liquidate Sailor? So Sailor says he's got a ton of capital to deploy to avoid those liquidations. There were some like clickbait headlines yesterday that saying that Sailor got liquidated on Twitter, but I don't think he did yet. And we'll see if Sailor can stay afloat and keep on putting liquidity in to avoid the margin call. But uh, yeah, he's in trouble for sure. MMC John asking if NFTs are getting wrecked. I actually have OpenSea open. I planned on discussing that in this video, so I'll get to that in one minute. Let's see, CG, aren't you worried about privacy coins all banned once regulation hits? I would rather live on my feet than die on my knees, CG. No, I'm not worried about that. If you're worried about that, I'm not sure what to tell you. We got Digital Hustle Network saying, morning, brother. What's up, Digital Hustle Network? Good to see you in the live stream. Be sure to smash up that like button down below. Good to see you. We got a sniff saying, yeah, I think privacy coins are on regulators' hit list. Yeah, they're definitely on their hit list, but are you that weak where you're going to be scared of them? I mean, I'm a full-grown man, right? I'm, I'm going to live on my feet better than die on my knees. Let's see what else is going on. Digital Hustle Network saying, Litecoin waited years for Mimble Wimble. Now the market, the market hates them. Yeah, Litecoin um, back down to some super low prices right now. We take a look at LTC. Used to be a top 10 coin, now sitting at number 20, back to 44 bucks. Like this is almost at its previous bear market low almost. 
we take a look at LTC. So yeah, it went as low as $23 in the March 2020 crash, and this is weak. This is very weak. Can still drop another 45% to these lows, and you know it's it is pretty low in the chart right now. Uh, but yeah, Litecoin looking very weak. Let's see what else is going on. CG saying maybe banned from listing them. So how do you trade in and out? Uh, we got things like Thor Swap, and there's going to be a lot of other atomic swap protocols going to allow you to trade between Bitcoin and Monero, Ethereum and Monero, Layer Ones and Monero very very easily. Right? Those are already in the works. And um, yeah, I mean, listen, water always finds a way around the the cracks and crevices, etc. Right? It will find a way. And I don't think it's going to die. I think it's only going to flourish heavily when those big regulations do hit because that was literally the reason that it was created. Bitcoin was literally created for the exact reasons we're seeing right now play out in real time with inflation. There's only 21 million Bitcoin. The world has not woken up to that just yet. All right. So very, very confident in the future of cryptocurrency and the industry as a whole. They're going to try to regulate it. They're going to try to, I mean, it generates billions of dollars of tax revenue for the government as well. Right? So they're not going to get rid of it, but they're going to do their best to contain it. But longer term, um, you know, regulations are bearish in the short term because it's going to restrict a lot of kind of freedoms. But longer term, the market, the free market will prevail, especially with crypto. And I think coins like Monero have a very bright future. Let's see. Fresh Money saying, what's going on with the Ripple and ETH 2.0 because I can't pull out of it. So with Ripple, they're still in their lawsuit. Who knows when that's going to end? And with ETH 2.0, expect it to keep on getting delayed. So who knows when that's going to actually release? Uh, that's what I have to say about those two things. Reverend Flashback saying, he loves XMR, but right now he's not sure. Are atomic swaps between XMR and BTC already available or not? Um... Not necessarily. I don't believe they're available right now. Um, there are ways to get Monero in completely decentralized ways where it can never be tracked to you. I'm not going to discuss that here in the stream. Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to come soon anyway, so it will happen, right? It's in development, and there are ways to get Monero without it ever having like any trails going back to YouTube. But I won't say anything about that any further. Uh, Digital Hustle Network saying, yeah, it's one more coming. I see it stopping closer to 16K, followed by a long gradual run up to 2024. Yep, 16K does look good. Mike B saying, do you think better access to financial information via social media is keeping max capitulation from happening sooner? Uh, no, not necessarily. I don't think that's having a direct effect on the timeline. I think that... Um, the Fed continuing to raise rates will cause the max capitulation to actually happen. Uh, but I don't think the social media information effect is causing people to hold their crypto right now. 25K or 18K coming first? Well, that's hard to say, right? Those are two scenarios. That's a bullish scenario and a bearish scenario. I don't have that crystal ball to tell you which one will come first, but I can say that 25K is definitely a big resistance level, 18K as well as a nice support level going back to the 2017 bull market. And then as well, the big levels up here at around 27K are worth keeping an eye on. 26,750 with his nice long wick. And then previous support now resistance at 27,250 as well in this red supply zone that I have outlined earlier in the stream just here. These are your overhead resistance levels. And in terms of 18K, if we go to 18K, we're going to 16K. So which one will come first? I don't know. All I know is we are, this is basically the current range. If I go ahead and drop this at 16200, right? This is basically the current range that I expect us to play in from 27 down to 16. Which one gets tested first? We don't have that crystal ball to tell, but I will be playing this range in the short term looking for trade opportunities. And when we get to the key kind of pivot points in the range, that's when you look for the nice big swing trade opportunities. And of course, that's when you really grow your account size balance with those nice big swing trades. Let's see. Um, do you buy or sell short term? What do you buy or sell short term? I'm not sure what you mean about that local host. Sue saying don't be a slave to the system. Absolutely, I agree with that. 
Bro, what are you going to do if the SEC rear naked choke them? Um, I don't think that they're going to rear naked choke Monero. I don't think they can do that. If they do that to XRP Ripple, that's fine. I don't hold any XRP Ripple if they rear naked choke Ripple. Um, but yeah, if they take them out, if they submit them, who knows what's going to happen with that. I think XRP is going to win the case, but the SEC is just prolonging it as much as possible. Uh, very interesting stuff going on there. Let's see what else is going on. Bicho Brazil with us this morning. What's happening, Bicho? Bicho is saying, Buenos Dios, Emperor. Shout out to you, keeping it real. Facts over feelings. Got the Emperor's course. It's all that. And then some saludos. Shout out to Bicho Brazil. So, yes, Bicho talking about the premium elite trading course. He's also a member of the Discord. Saying it is all that and then some. And I do agree. If you want to learn how to trade, this is your resource to go to. Check it out on the official Crypto Empire website, CryptoEmpireCo.io. Shout out to Bicho Brazil with us this morning. We also got Nerland Mohammed saying hello from Ireland. What's up? All the way from Ireland. Good to have you here. Let's see. Kaye Loop saying good morning from the West Coast. What are your thoughts on Maker? Thanks for what you do. Well, I like DAI as a stable coin and Maker is a solid project, right? DAI is a fully collateralized crypto. Uh, stable coin, I mean. Fully collateralized by cryptocurrency as a stable coin pegged to $1. I like Maker. It's worked up until this point. It works very well, and um, you know, in terms of a buy, I think you can go to 500. If we go look at the, the Maker Dow chart. As you can see, we are at 782 right now. If we go to the weekly, we do have a lot of liquidity down here at 500, which is why I say 500. And I just know that because being a market participant now for many years, I remember when it was chopping around for these weeks in 2020 at the $500 level. And most things are coming back to those 2020 range bound levels that we experienced two years ago. But yeah, Maker most likely headed back down here sub $600. But nonetheless, it is finding support at this previous resistance level, which takes place at $695. But make or die, uh, good protocol. It works. So, let's see. Stefan saying, "LOL, 10k per XMR." Dot dot dot. I don't know what's funny about that, Stefan, but uh, glad you have a laugh with that. Let's see what else is going on. XRP is winning the case for sure. For sure, yeah, I think they will as well. Uh, Rakish saying, "Hi from Germany. New to your channel. What's going on, Rakish? Welcome to Crypto Empire, where we dominate the crypto markets." Of course, we are keeping it very real today. Um, no reason for any hopium right now. It is it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. The current macro outlook, interest rates, cash is king. And the only thing that necessarily you should be doing in crypto right now is one, dollar cost averaging into you know the strong ones like Bitcoin and ETH that you know will be here. Um, everything else, all coins, I think, even Bitcoin and ETH, I expect to go lower. And of course, we're waiting on the Fed to pivot their outlook and turn dovish again and start lowering interest rates. But that there's no no telling when inflation will actually start to get curbed. And inflation is the main problem right now, which is having the most the biggest impact on the markets overall. Let's see what else is going on. Sniff saying the hexagram on their flag represents <laughs> okay we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, what about Adam? Take a look at Cosmos. CG asking, how do you think markets will react if Ukraine war ends, assuming no changes on inflation? So that would be good if the Ukraine war ends, but right now it's kind of just the never-ending narrative that's just played on the television screen. So, you know, if, if the Ukraine war ends, there is going to be the next thing to talk about forever. It's just one of those things that just never ends, right? There's always one thing next to keep the uh, cycle going, if you know what I mean, CG. So, yeah, if the Ukraine war ends, there's going to be something else that just never ends. That will end. There's going to be something else that never ends. And it's just a cycle of doom forever on the television screen, which is why I don't watch television. But looking at Cosmos Atom, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Atom having a nice bounce. Let's take a look. I don't want to look at the Bitcoin chart. Atom USDT on Binance. Did go ahead and bottom out in the short term at $5.87. 
as you can see we did have this descending wedge over here and it did fall through this descending wedge or descending pennant not a wedge my apologies it fell right through this descending pennant and it did come down here to 587 as you can see I have a level outline at 552 there is a reason this line is on the chart for Adam right this is a level that I am looking at um, but yeah right now not very confident in um, and how things are playing out so my thoughts on this are my thoughts I think you can go down to this range from 550 down to 430 pretty decent probability that price goes back into this range on Cosmos Adam Cosmos a very very good uh, crypto I believe in it long term the internet of blockchains its founder Jay Kwan created Cosmos for the very ethos of crypt why cryptocurrency was created. He wants a decentralized, permissionless future with no central entities controlling everything. So Cosmos, I believe in it, but here in the short term to the midterm, I do think it is headed lower to these lower range levels from around 430 up to 552. Mike B saying, do you think a spot ETF via Grayscale would be good or bad for the markets right now? I don't think it would have any effect and it might be bad because it would be easier to sell uh, things like Bitcoin but yeah I mean we've been waiting for a BTF for years if it were to happen now it would have no bullish effect right it just wouldn't create there's no demand right the Fed is literally drying up demand right now we are in the Sahara Desert and the blistering heat at 12 noon hasn't even started yet okay it's gonna heat up it's gonna get super super dry Liquidity is going to dry up. Demand going to totally dry up. Uh, so if there was a spot ETF for Bitcoin, it would be very good when the bull market rolls around the next time around. But with a low demand, low liquidity environment like we're in, only said to get worse as the Fed continues to raise rates, it won't have any effect. Let's see. Z saying, thoughts on RMRK Remark. Great project again. And of course, this was exploding when the metaverse hype was taking place. And I think we will see the metaverse hype come back. A lot of metaverse projects are actually set to launch at the end of this year, 2022 and early 2023. All right, so we could see a bit of a metaverse bull run then. Of course, we need to see what happens with the overall uh, macro economy at that time. But RMRK, I do like the project. As you can see, it's down 94, almost 95% from its all-time high just six months ago in December okay and if we look at the chart as well this is a three-day chart and yeah the bottom is down here two dollars two dollars will probably get tested at this point when we see that max capitulation take place trust wallet to explode I doubt it I doubt trust wallet token will expo explode um, I got this airdrop and I did sell it, so I don't hold this anymore. But um, it's pumping today, having a nice bounce. But I don't think it will explode anytime soon. Next bull market could have a nice run. I could be wrong here in the short term, but I don't see it exploding. Let's see, Digital Hustle Network saying, yo, I got to go make some content. But I'm glad I was able to catch the stream. Long live the empire. Much love, Digital Hustle Network. Thank you for being here in the Crypto Empire live stream. Always good to have you, my friend. It's been a while since I saw you pop into the live chat. Go make that content. I'll be sure to watch it and hit the like button as well. So shout out to Digital Hustle Network. Go subscribe to his channel, everybody, if you want some good crypto content as well. We got Rakesh saying, what altcoins do you think would be good to buy when the bloodbath is over? The ones which will give the higher returns. Um, I've talked about it quite a bit, right? You don't need to go searching for into page number six of coin gecko looking at the ranks 500 and 600 of course i have my picks you know things like fetch ai i still believe in fetch getting destroyed right now if we go look at fet as you can see it's 10 cents and this thing is headed most likely seven to five to four cents um, so yeah this would probably be a super good one to buy right if it goes down to four cents, back up to a dollar, we're talking a 20x there. 
and you know when this technology starts getting rolled out starts getting used in the real world and the market flips bullish again there's a pretty decent chance it even breaks that dollar level and starts making higher newer all-time highs so i like fed still uh, no doubt about that another popular one that i've talked about here in the channel woo right woo just breaking this channel lower um, probably going to head back to six cents to four cents to even lower all right so there's no rush on things like this possibly even three to two cents here on Wu. Um, you know, those are some lower caps. Casper, I still think is good, in terms of if you want some low caps. But I mean, Monero, Bitcoin, ETH, Glimmer as well. We've talked about Glimmer, um, you know, breaking the triangle as expected, headed lower, sub $1. To everybody said there would be no $1 sub $1 Glimmer. Who was right and who was wrong? I mean, here at Crypto Empire, we called it perfectly here, which is why we didn't buy it too early. We're still waiting for lower prices here on Glimmer. But yeah, good to see sub one dollar. Um, so yeah, things like that, right? You don't, you don't need to overcomplicate it. Polkadot gonna be an amazing ecosystem. Solana most likely as well, even though Solana is broken. Um, you know, it's backed by some very big crypto players that probably will get fixed and have an, an amazing next bull run. Let's see, Mr. Sellers Homes saying he's buying Adam when it goes down there. Awesome, Mr. Sellers Homes. Sniff saying someone siphoned gas from his car. I mean, that's, <laughs> sounds like you left it somewhere where it shouldn't have been left or you, you just, um, yeah, I mean, that's crazy, right? People got to sue pretty low to go ahead and siphon gas from your car. I mean, times are tough, but that's, um, that's kind of absurd. And uh, yeah, people will be people, right? So I've, I, uh, I'm sorry to hear that sniff. See a man saying he subscribed to the channel. Awesome that you were subscribed. Be sure to smash up that like button as well, everybody. All 85 viewers watching the stream, hit that like button. We only have around 50 likes right now, so get that up to par. And we got Victor saying, what do you think of GMT? So I did a video on GMT in terms of where I think it's going. If you're using it already right now, awesome. Keep on making money. But watch this video right here. The truth about step in crypto, GST, and GMT. Um, most likely, the two scenarios that I outlined in this video will play out. There's going to be too many players, too many sneakers, um, too much supply in the market, not enough demand, or too many high-level sneakers making too much of the tokens of the GMT and GST tokens, causing too much supply in the open market. It does have Ponzi economics. So for now, if you're making money with it, just wring it dry as long as you can because it will most likely not last forever. Let's see. Possible to do a course on buying Monero and trackless transfers? Yeah, I can. I can do something like that for sure. Hundred percent. Ma. Good idea. Let's see. Victor DePaul. He made a dedicated step in video. Mr. Sellers Holmes got it. Sniff left his car running with the AC when his dogs were inside, and they siphoned the gas right out. That is stooping very low uh, for humanity, but um, you know. Times are super tough, so people um, are going to do sketchy things. So that's why you need to protect yourself um, for obvious reasons. Anyway, guys, I hope that you did enjoy this live stream. I wanted to come up on here, talk about NFTs too. You can see the volume with these NFTs are increasing. Uh, floor price is going up. It did capitulate a bit, but NFTs are still wrecked. But it is interesting to see that you know the volume is increasing on NFTs. People... You know, big money could be buying these as a way to hedge, um, you know, buying other things like Bitcoin and other altcoins. Uh, but yeah, the main blue chip seeing a big increase in volume over the past few days to the week, as you can see from these numbers. So interesting to see, something to keep an eye on as well with these NFTs, but still in a risk off environment like we are in right now. It is not the time to be deploying capital into NFTs, thinking they will make you money like they were 6 to 12 months ago in the raging NFT bull market that we saw. A lot of people that bought NFTs in that time period, 6 to 12 months ago, thought they had made it. If they still held and didn't sell, which is most NFT holders, they are wrecked right now from that initial purchase. All right? So a lot of pain right now in the market, and I do think it is only set to get worse here. So let's have fun actively trading the volatility. Let's have fun with our cash bags waiting on the sideline, waiting to deploy them at the right time. But for now, all we can do is be patient and wait for the proper setups to present themselves in the chart for our short-term swing trades. And then as well, wait for that max capitulation to take place where we'll buy all the assets up on the cheap, 
hold them for the rest of the bear, sell them in the bull market, and then we'll be laughing after that. With that being said, it is time for me to go ahead and wrap up this Crypto Empire Morning Domination live stream. I hope that you did enjoy the stream. If you did, be sure to let me know by smashing the like button down below. If you're new to Crypto Empire, go ahead right now and subscribe to the channel and turn on all the notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. But my name is Connor from Crypto Empire. This was Crypto Empire Morning Domination episode number six. I will see you all tomorrow for episode number seven. Have an amazing rest of your Tuesday and let me